Hi there, this is Underwear Guy, and for this part of the UPS Delivery Man tutorial, I'm just going to talk pretty briefly about the belt that I wore. I ended up not sourcing at the time the right color belt that I really wanted. The UPS color is not a bright yellow, it's kind of a mustard, deep yellow, and I really wanted something that matched perfectly to the rest of the outfit and the UPS colors that we know so well. In order to do that, I just ended up painting a bright white belt that I got at Hot Topic, but you can get really any kind of belt from anywhere. It was just available and it made sense for me because I had a custom buckle that I found on eBay. I'll just highlight that for you. It was really fun because it's a, a unique find. I couldn't find any current eBay sellers that are offering this really nice kind of pewter metal buckle, but if you're lucky you might be able to find someone selling it again in the future. So as you can see, this is, as I mentioned, a Hot Topic Genuine Leather Belt, but it's been painted. So this was all bright white before, and instead it's now a mustard UPS yellow. It's a little bit of worse for the wear. I've had this belt for a while, and I could always retouch it. The paint I used to paint it, interestingly enough, was the fabric paint again. So I mixed up a combination of yellow and some brown together because I had to darken it down. This is white. and you might actually, depending on the surface, want to prime it a little bit with white, but I, I like this paint because you actually don't have to use too many coats of it. One of the advantages of using this fabric paint, even on non-fabric surfaces, is that it's very opaque, and so you don't have to layer on tons of coats of it in order to get the finish you need for the color. The other advantage of the fabric paint is that, as I've mentioned before, it remains flexible even after it dries. And so with something like a belt that's going to bend and curve instead of having it crack, you can see I can, I can pull this down all the way and the paint still stretches and moves with the belt so that I don't have to worry about it looking bad and distressed. And I, I just simply painted all the way around. There was really no technique to it. Again, using my trusty sponge brush and just did probably two coats. It took a little bit, but because it was white underneath it, it wasn't too bad. And let that dry. And again, it, once it dries, it's a really nice clean, smooth surface. It is a little bit porous, so it'll pick up dust um, and dirt if you're not careful and keeping it wiped down. It did uh, get a little bit of wear from the buckle. You can see there's some tarnishing of the color, which I can touch up there if I were interested in doing that. But otherwise, this is just to feature a little bit of how if you, you need a technique for coloring a belt or an accessory like this, something made out of leather, possibly that you need to match up and you don't know where you're going to buy the color if you don't have it off the shelf. Again, I will highlight that's the Tulip Soft Fabric Paint and it comes in some large sizes for the primary colors and then there's tons of smaller bottles for individual colors. I get these all from either Joanne Fabric Stores or Michael's Arts and Crafts Stores. They have a ton of these around in like the t-shirt and fabric printing areas. I recommend you check them out if you're ever doing something fun that you want to do any painting with on accessories or costume elements. If you're wondering about doing any other techniques for using these fabric paints, you can check out the other video in this series on the UPS Deliveryman costume for how I ended up painting one of the Joe Snyder briefs to match the brown color that I wanted. I also did a quick tutorial on stencil painting with fabric paints in the Superman underwear costume tutorial as well. So check those videos out, and in the meantime, this is Underwear Guy, and I hope you have fun underwear shopping.